the Seeger situation was a little bit different. Uh, when we did the Seeger situation, Bob had sort of been trying to get in touch with me to do something. We never clicked. I had one occasion, I almost, and we didn't click. And I got this call. Well, I got home from a date, and my wife says, you're supposed to be in Memphis. I said, no, I'm not. And uh, he said, we said he, he wants you there. I said, I don't care. I'm not. I just got off sessions for, I guess it was about almost three months. And uh, then eventually, Punch Andrews called again, and we were going to do uh, four sides. And uh, I was going to fly to Detroit and do pre-production. And every time I got to fly to Detroit to do pre-production, they called and canceled it. Then we get a call that he's coming in. And I got to get my engineer, Brian Christian. I flew him up from LA. And we get in, and he comes in with two songs. Uh, I still have them. They, had, they were never released. Uh, and uh, we did the two songs. And I said, you know, well, do we need, need, need a couple more songs, Bob? So we looked at and we decided we'd do My World is Empty Without You, Babe, from the Supremes, which we put together. And I said, we still need another song. And Bob was in my office noodling on the piano, and he was playing something. I said, that sounds really interesting. He always oh, says, it's not ready, it's not done. I said, well, just, just play it again, will you? And I said, look, I said, I think it's, it's got the potential to be a great track. Uh, let's do it. So in the meantime, I'd sent his keyboard player back to Detroit, his guitar player back to Detroit. So I actually got back in, and we set it up, and I got Doug Riley to come in, and uh, Joey Michelon on guitar. And we actually put Night Moves together in the studio, uh, from his very, very rough version of it on my piano in my office. And uh, the irony of it there is that when we finished it, and uh, uh, it was, I gave it back to Punch Andrews, I guess they sent it to, sent one to Capitol, and we didn't hear anything. They didn't like it, apparently. So I said, oh, well, you, you know, you win some, you lose some. And uh, they had a, uh, John Carter was the A&R at Capitol in LA at that time, and he came up to Toronto to see Capitol up here, and we were pretty tight with Capitol. Arnold Gazowicz is a good friend of mine. And they used to bring them down to the studio when they brought VPs in. And, and of course, John comes in, and I cornered him, and I said, I gather you didn't like uh, the, the uh, Seeger stuff. And you, when you hit an A&R guy like that, you know, it's sort of hum, ha, et cetera. They try to avoid everything they possibly can. And I said, no, no, I said, I'm just interested. He says, well, he said, both tracks were, were okay. I said, what do you mean both tracks? He said, well, we got the two tracks. I said, well, I did four. What did you hear? And he gave me the two songs that Bob had brought in, which were, they were wrong key and he wouldn't change the key and so I said well did you want to hear the other two and he said yeah and I played them night moves and then he says he says night moves is, is just great I said yeah and he said you cut here and you cut here and you got three minutes and 35 seconds and uh, that was the last I heard of it and I was in New York doing the Brecker Brothers over the holiday and I opened Billboard and there's night moves I think it was nine or ten, no, at least 90 or, or 91, uh, produced by Punch Andrews. So I got on the phone to Capitol and got hold of John Carter, and we did the usual, you know, we get together here, get to my girl, call your girl, etc. And I said, John, you got tw 24 hours to get those credits changed on that record, which he did, and needless to say, it uh, became a monster.